Hi, I am Patrick Dillon, and I'm an associate professor of hematology and oncology at the University of Virginia. Today, we're going to talk about the use of checkpoint inhibitors to modulate response to focused ultrasound in metastatic breast cancer. These are my disclosures. The rationale to study focused ultrasound in breast cancer is due to evidence of an abscopal effect or a systemic immune response to the ablation of a primary tumor. There are now about a dozen groups who have published on this phenomena, and I'm showing just one elegant example of a murine study in which a tumor implanted in a mouse uh, was ablated and then distant tumor sites also regressed, as well as uh, systemic immune responses being observed. Given that many groups have observed this abscopal effect, uh, we think that we could uh, verify this in a well-designed human clinical trial. The human trial schema is set up here. All patients will receive focused ultrasound at three weeks into treatment. Half the patients will receive pembrolizumab prior to the ablation, and half will receive the pembrolizumab after focused ultrasound ablation. And all patients will have biopsies as well as blood and cross-sectional images. The methodology for the study involves the use of pembrolizumab at the FDA-approved dose of 200 milligrams. The device for ablation is the EchoPulse device at a standard power. The skin area is anesthetized with lidocaine, and tumor volumes are selected up to 50% of the target of lesions. Biopsies are performed at baseline day 22 and 64, and we're assessing these biopsies for T cells, MDSCs, and regulatory cells. This slide is here to demonstrate what we mean by the periablated zone. In the picture on the left, you can see that there's a core needle biopsy just outside the tumor itself, whereas on the right, there is a biopsy right in the center of the ablated tumor. The status on this trial is that there are 10 patients enrolled to date, and the median age is slightly below the average age for a breast cancer patient in the United States. The prior therapies are multiple, and there are 9 out of 10 patients with visceral metastases and a couple of patients with brain metastases, so a sick patient population. Receptor status uh, varies across all the statuses. And for safety, I can tell you so far that side effects have been fairly minimal, with only some ablation site pain, some fatigue, nausea, and dyspnea, as would be expected in a population of metastatic patients. The preliminary data from exploratory endpoint of RNA-seq, I'm going to show you that we observe a significant change compared to baseline for uh, RNA expression in the ablated versus the pretreatment areas, and you can see in red the upregulated genes uh, in the ablated area, and then from the biopsies taken in the periablated area on the right, you can see slightly different pattern of upregulated and downregulated genes. These are the chemokine profiles from the RNA seq, and this panel of a dozen chemokines. Uh, compared to the baseline biopsy, shows significant changes compared to baseline, as well as several significant differences between the ablated zones and the peri-ablated zones. Gene set enrichment analysis from our RNA-seq data from these eight patients shows evidence of enrichment in regard to immune response across all the patients. Uh, there's also change in interferon production and signaling, as well as myeloid uh, migration activation, lymphocyte migration and activation, and some changes in cell cycle transitions and DNA replication. This slide shows our immunohistochemistry results. In the bottom left, you can see a photomicrograph from a breast lesion that was ablated. You can see that there's quite a bit of cellular debris as well as some macrophages and a few lymphocytes present. There are also three graphs showing variations in the CD8, FOXP3, and the ratios amongst eight of the patients. If you look at the three graphs, you can see that there's wide variation between baseline and post-ablation T-cell responses, and there's not a discernible pattern amongst these first eight patients yet. Interestingly, on the bottom right, the ratios of CD8s to FOXP3s does seem to change significantly from pre-ablation to post-ablation, and this suggests that uh, there's differences amongst patients based upon the timing of when they got their checkpoint inhibitor, which notice I'm not showing you on this slide. There's also likely to be differences based upon prior treatments as well as other patient-specific characteristics. The primary conclusion from this trial 
thus far preliminarily is that there is wide variation amongst immune responses to focused ultrasound plus a checkpoint inhibitor, and there is encouraging preliminary data suggesting that um, immune activation is achieved systemically and locally by focused ultrasound plus checkpoint inhibitor. Thanks to the University of Virginia, the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, Thrack, Leon Merck, and UVA Cancer Center Support Grant.